Okay, if you guys are here, you're probably wondering the same thing I've been wondering since I first started playing the Isle, and that is how does the bleed system work exactly? Now I've tried researching videos, but nothing really just quite gets it down on how it actually functions and how things are calculated for you. So I rented a small 20 person server, went in there, did a bunch of trial and error and experiment in the last two days, and I finally nailed it down on how it, things work. So there are a lot of false rumors going around, like last one I heard was that if you have three drops of blood here, that will triple the number of damage you see here on your character sheet, and that's completely wrong. A lot of people are also under the impression that the drops of blood here are based on what this is here, and it's actually the exact opposite. This damage number you see here is based on a number scale that is applied to the blood drops that you do not see the number of. That scale for all dinosaurs is between 0 and 100. If you have a maximum bleed and three drops of 100, that means your dinosaur would lose 100 health every three seconds that that full bleed is applied until he starts healing. Now you may be wondering, but you never see numbers like that on the character sheet here. Well that is because that is the raw damage that is applied to your dinosaur. It does not factor in the final element of the dinosaur's bleed resistance, which when you calculate that in is how you get the final damage result for your dinosaur. So let's bring up the the formula here. It's a lot of people know the formula. It's much like the same as the bite force formula. It goes the attacker's weight divided by the victim's weight and then you multiply the result of that by the attacking dinosaur's bleed per bite. And that is how the three blood drop number is determined. So let's plug in a few numbers using uh, Dilo attacking a Rex as an example because that just makes me happy thinking about that. Anyway, uh, Dilo's weight is 1200. You divide that by the Rex's weight of 5800. And that is 0 0.2. Now you multiply that 0 0.2 by the Dilophosaurus's bleed per bite, which is 50, and you get a result of 10, which means for every one bite the Dilo does to a Rex, he applies 10 to that scale of 1 to 100, meaning you need to bite a Rex 10 times in order to get him to maximum bleed if he has not healed any of it off yet. So that is how the three blood drops is determined. Now, to get the final damage your dinosaur will receive, or the, the final damage the Rex will receive, you got to subtract his bleed resistance from that scale of 1 to 100. Now, for a standing Rex that is not moving anywhere, he has a 70% reduction in damage for his bleed. So, for each bite, 10 damage, minus 70%, which is 7, and you get, voila, 3 damage for every 3 seconds. Now if the Rex starts trotting or running, his bleed resistance becomes lower and he will take more damage. When a Rex is trotting, he takes 50% the damage of a bleed, so he has a 50% reduction. Meaning he will take 5 bleed every 3 seconds if he is moving around. If he is running, he will only get a reduction of 30%, so he will take 7% or sorry, you will take 7 damage every 3 seconds if he is running from one bite of a Dilo. So basically this will help a lot of bleed players out, the Gigas and the Dilos, figure out how many bites it takes to get them to max bleed and how often you need to go in for a return bite. Because we've most of us have been there. Be a pack of Dilos, see a good Rex, start a fight, and there's always that one person in the group that has to continuously go in to get another bite in even though he's already at max bleed. And all that's going to do is an extra 30 damage from his health pool of 6,500. And it's going to risk that Dilo getting dropped by the Rex in a single bite. And depending on which server you're playing in, that could end the fight on you right there and just spoil the fun and the thrill for everyone. So let's take this to heart. I'm going to make a separate video each for the Dilo bleed table and the Giga bleed table and you guys will know 
will be better prepared on how to fight things. I'm going to put an image up on the screen right now, right here, which shows the different bleed resistances for all the dinos and their different uh, actions, as well as their bleed rate, or bleed heal rate, sorry. Now, most of this information was known from research on the internet, but a lot of it I had to figure out myself, so they are pretty much approximations. Uh, they are fairly accurate, though, because if I took those numbers and applied them, I was able to calculate how long it would take each down to bleed out, whether they're standing, trotting, or running. And for the most part, I was fairly accurate, off by a couple seconds. So these numbers are pretty reliable and using for fights, if you want. It's also reliable and so you better know your own dinosaur and how long they will take to heal from the bleeds. Let's just say if you're a drow, you do not want to be bleeding. You will be sitting there for about 50 minutes. If you're at full bleed as a, a drow, you will be sit on the ground for almost an hour to heal off that bleed. So there are some interesting things here. And obviously the ones that are not survival dinosaurs, they aren't quite up to date, so they're kind of like all over the place with the stats and they bleed out pretty good but yeah hopefully this creates awareness on how the bleed function works for you guys all right see you next time